morning, everyone. I'm Olga Villaverde. And I'm Amber Milt. Welcome to The Balancing Act. Today, our Broadway Across America series continues with The Bodyguard, the musical. I love this. Based on the smash hit film, of course, this romantic thriller features a host of irresistible classic songs. You know them all? Oh, from the film, they're amazing. I recently spoke with its star, Grammy-nominated R&B recording artist Deborah Cox at the fabulous Fountain Blue Hotel on Miami Beach. Can't wait. Plus, we've got an innovative way to take your temperature and so much more. All right, well, let's start the show. Broadway Balances America brought to you by Broadway Across America, bringing the best of Broadway to a city near you. Saving All My Love, Run To You, I Want To Dance With Somebody, and of course, that bestseller, I Will Always Love You, these classic songs are the soundtrack that drives this musical. And as for the woman who will be belting out these anthems night after night, well, she knows that love is always at the center of it all. Why I so much more than I ever loved you. Grammy nominated Deborah Cox is no stranger to performing, but she's about to take on a new role as the US tour of the bodyguard gets ready to hit the road. Well, I'm really excited to bring this story to a completely new generation. People will see this story of this iconic recording artist. She's really at the pinnacle of her career, and she is being stalked by someone. So she, uh, her, her team hires a bodyguard to protect her, and she essentially falls in love. So you really see the struggle with her, her passion and her love for Frank Farmer, the bodyguard. At its heart, it's a love story, you know, set against a thriller. So you don't usually associate the word thriller or mystery with musicals, right? It is about the complications of that love story and what people's different life journeys, very different people end up falling in love with each other, right? And the soundtrack contains not just songs from the film, but hits from the 80s and 90s. the opportunity to actually sing these songs full out as opposed to just hearing little snippets in the film. Um, songs like Run To You, um, Queen of the Night, people will be able to, you know, hang out and party right there in their seats and then be moved to tears, <laughs> you know, with some of the other legendary ballads. So hold me in, it's awesome. I'm really excited Deborah Cox is starring in The Bodyguard. She's a pop idol in her own right, because she has 12 number one dance floor hits on the Billboard charts. I love that she had a personal relationship with Whitney. In fact, there's a, a duet that they recorded together called Same Script, Different Cast. And then she brings all of the pathos and personal connectivity to that character of Rachel. Um, it's pretty special, so I think the audiences are going to love it. We spent the day with Cox, who lives in South Florida at the famous Fontainebleau Hotel on Miami Beach, which played an important part in the movie. So isn't this great? This is the scene. It's gorgeous. Where uh, Kevin Costner came out and yeah. was talking to Whitney. Isn't right this here. incredible? Oh, and the fountain blue, how yeah. beautiful here. Beautiful, beautiful. This time, while reading the script, I have to make sure that I make Rachel Marin human, vulnerable. I try to connect with her on an emotional level. I am a recording artist and I can relate to a lot of, of things in the script, but there are moments where I have to try to find, uh, again, that vulnerability um, and make sure that the essence of her and, and why she is in the position that she's in, why she falls in love with Frank Farmer, I have to make sure that those things connect. of love, it's at the center of not only the production, but her life as well. She's passionate about her career and her family. She's married to her high school sweetheart and manager, LaSalle Stevens, and has three children, son Isaiah and two daughters, Sumaya and Kayla Michelle. I have an amazing partner in this, my husband, LaSalle, who is, you know, on top of running our corporations and label and 
and managing my career. He really steps in as an amazing father, husband, and you know, takes leadership of that role and helps to lead our crew. Um, but we make it work and we're committed to each other, we're committed to our family, committed to our children. And it's tough to take off the hats, but we switch the roles and we, um, we just team up and get it done. How do you balance your work and your home life? Well, it's really, I say, a juggling act. You know, I try to stay very present um, as opposed to being in the moment and constantly thinking about the next thing. I used to do that a lot, but now I've learned that staying present, almost being in a mindset of being moment to moment, which helps me to enjoy my life, enjoy my family, but also enjoy work too. And it just is a better balance for me because I get to have the best of both worlds, you know. I'm every woman, it's all in me. Get ready. Get ready to be entertained. Get ready to have a great time. You're gonna laugh, you're gonna sing, you're gonna cry. You're gonna really feel for these two characters. Um, you're gonna, you know, be just fully entertained. It's just like, it's gonna be full circle. Hearing all these great, great songs live with an amazing production. Um, I'm looking forward to the, the dancing, the singing, the acting, you know, just, just doing it all on stage every single night. The U.S. tour of The Bodyguard is coming soon to a theater near you. Check out Broadway Across America, Broadway Balances America, or you can go to our website, thebalancingact.com, for all the show information, tour dates, and more. I hate it when my daughter is sick. I don't like it when she doesn't feel good because I know that she's going to be tired, she's going to be lethargic, she's not going to have an appetite, she's going to be grumpy. You always want your kid to be happy and healthy and when they're not, it, it hurts. A fever is your body telling you that you're sick, that you're fighting off an infection. So the first thing that we do when we, we touch our foreheads, we see if if we're warm, is our body fighting off an infection? And then we instantly go, oh my goodness, we have to go take our temperature. I need to go see if, if this is actually happening. Having to take your child's temperature when they're sick is always challenging. A lot of times they have a sore throat. They don't want to open up their mouth. They are asleep, they're grumpy, they don't want to be touched. No one wants, you want your child to have rest when they're not feeling well. Normal temperature is 98.6 degrees. That temperature was derived from a doctor in Germany in the mid 1800s. He went and took samples from over two million patients with an underarm thermometer. That's crazy to me, that, that we have not evolved beyond a standard normal temperature that was discovered in the mid 1800s. What's exciting is, is that because this technology hasn't changed for so long. This gave us the opportunity to really make a huge pivot. And what we've done is developed the first digital infrared technology. This allows us to take temperature instantly without touching the skin. With the InstaTemp, with our thermometer, you simply point and click and you get a temperature instantly. As a mom, there's a lot of anxiety that comes with having a sick child. For instance, you want to make sure that you're getting an accurate reading from your thermometer. I can't tell you the number of times that I've taken the same thermometer and put it back inside of her mouth four and five times just to figure out what her temperature was because every time I got a different reading. When you take a temperature and the light shows green, it means that it's in a healthy temperature range. If it's orange, it means that it's a little above or a little low standard normal temperature range. If it's red, it means that you're febrile. When it's orange or red, you should probably contact your physician. I don't have to wake her up in the middle of the night to find out what her temperature is. I can just go in, I can stand an inch away from her, I aim it between her eyes, above her eyebrows, push the button, and it gives me her temperature. It also is LED backlit, so I don't even have to turn the lights on to find out what her temperature is. And those busy mornings when we're finally starting to feel better again, and it's time to go back to school, we still have a little bit of a cough, we may have a little bit of a runny nose, a little bit of a sore throat, but I know that if I send her to school and she has a fever, that they're definitely going to send her back home. So I can just grab this while I'm making breakfast, aim it at her, get a reading, and when she's, you know, in that gauge where her temperature is where it should be, I know that I'm sending her to school healthy and well, we're not spreading any germs, and that makes me feel good about being a mom. You can always find us at instatemp.com.
Today we're going to address one of those annoying problems no one likes to talk about. Do you ever feel like you have the world's tiniest bladder that you're constantly making a run for the bathroom? Well, guess what? It actually may be a medical condition called overactive bladder. Here to help us understand this problem is Dr. Peter Rosenblatt, Director of Urogynecology at Mount Auburn Hospital in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And also joining him is Carolyn Hampton, who can talk about OAB from a deeply personal perspective because she's one of 37 million Americans, one in six adults, actually living with this. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. One in six adults, doctor, that's a lot. Olga, this is really common. I mean, this is one of those conditions people don't like to talk about, but it affects, as you said, 37 million Americans, or about 16% of the population, both men mm -hmm. and women. Let's talk about first our internal plumbing, you know, our bladder, whether we suffer from OAB or not. So the bladder is just a ba basically a storage area. You know, it accepts urine from the kidneys, and it keeps it there until a socially acceptable time and place when we can empty our bladder. Women and men with OAB or overactive bladder just have that constant frequency and urgency. <laughs> they get up at night to go to the bathroom and they yes. may, may leak and empty their bladder And she's completely. nodding because she's like, been there, done that, Absolutely. I know. Absolutely. Oh, too many, too many nights, four, five, six, seven, eight times a night. Gotta and it go. can be so annoying. Now there's several myths I want to talk about and I'd like your input, doctor, and as well, Carolyn, here's myth number one regarding OAB. It's a normal part of aging, true or false? Yeah, right, no, that is not true. It's not true! You know, overactive bladder and also urinary incontinence, I think people expect you have some children, you leak urine, it is not true. It is not a normal part of the aging process. It's never normal and it can be treated. Myth number two, Carolyn, let me see if you can give me your input on this one. People with OAB can no longer live fully active lives. Oh my goodness, that is so untrue. That's so not true. <laughs> so untrue. Um, and let me chime in with something the doctor has said about um, uh, you have to get over it and go talk to someone. You have to so communicate. That's the very first thing you have to do. You gotta let somebody know there's a problem because we don't talk about it. The kid gets three years old, they're potty trained, we don't ever talk about going to the bathroom anymore. Now we have to talk about it because I gotta go every 45 minutes or an hour. But it does change your life, but there's hope. With OAB solutions, you now can have a regular life. And I play tennis. Well, I'm learning tennis, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I run 5Ks and I walk right 5Ks. Good 5K. for you. I travel, I go visit my daughter. I don't have that embarrassment of, I need to go to the bathroom. I need to sit at right. the table closest to the restroom. restroom. I, know, I need I've to be in the that. hotel room. I want the bed closest to the bathroom. Right. I don't have to do that anymore. I'm more normal now. I don't have to worry about the odor. I don't have to worry about packing extra pads. All those things changed when you have OAB, but when you get a solution, now I can be like what I think everybody else is. Yeah, right? Can I just say, Olga, that these are, the, the, I'm so great what Carolyn is saying, because so many people live in silence. This is one of those things that people just usually we aren't don't. willing to we talk don't. about. They become socially isolated. They become depressed. They should They stop making plans with their family. You know, and there's hope out there. And let's go now to the positive. So what has changed your life? What solution did you find? Well. I was able to, with the help of my doctor, get to a urologist that turned me on to an inner stem device by Medtronic. And what that does is it helps my bladder know, give me the right signal when it's time to go and when it's not. What Carolyn is describing is an advanced therapy called Interstem. We usually start off recommending behavioral modification. Everyone's heard about like Kegel exercises, you know, the pelvic floor exercises. They they often teach when you're pregnant. Right. I'm doing it right and now. And you, know, you can do it anytime. You can do it in a car. You can do it during an interview. <laughs> and uh, so Kegel exercises, um, avoiding dietary irritants mm -hmm. like caffeine and even alcohol can be an irritant to the bladder. There's something called bladder retraining where we go on a scheduled uh, visits to the bathroom and slowly increase the time between going to the bathroom. Those are behavior modifications. Very commonly people prescribe medications for this. And medications have a, their role. So when those don't work or people have side effects, then we go to the advanced therapies like what, what Carolyn is talking about with Interstim. And you know one of the things that this has done for me? It's made me want to give back because I found this and I know I internalized it and I know a lot of other women have too. So I now go and talk to other women as an ambassador for Medtronic and let them know what the device has done for me and any questions they have I am in total open book. And I said, can I ask you this? You can ask me anything. Doctor, I love her. 
She's not shy. She's on the show. She's talking right. about this, and she's doing something. <laughs> this is this is the most important thing because people need to be open. They need to talk to the primary care physician, oh, demand yeah. that they get referred to either a urogynecologist or a urologist who can offer them these treatments, including the advanced therapy like the Medtronic bladder control therapy. All right, and you let you keep us posted if you get that. What's that thing called? The what is it? Forehand or what oh, is it? Yeah, the backhand. Backhand. <laughs> I'm not a tennis player. Doctor, thank you so much for your My time. My pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> and you can find out more about today's topic by visitting their website at RestoreMyControl.com forward slash Balancing Act. That's RestoreMyControl.com forward slash Balancing Act. Or you can also always check out our website. We have a video recap for you of this segment, and that's TheBalancingAct.com. Think outside the box, and I mean the cereal box. Add a special layer of crunch and real fruit flavor sweetness to your morning recipes and snacks. Here's the story, right here, my two friends, strawberry and blueberry tiny toast cereal. Absolutely incredible. These little tiny toasts pack such a wallop of flavor, it's amazing. And they're so versatile, you can use them for just about anything, not just for milk anymore. Look what we did over here. I've got some canapes that have been made that are so fantastic. How about creme fraiche and raspberry atop a strawberry tiny toast? How about blueberries with yogurt on top of a blueberry toast? It happened in my kitchen just a little while ago. Look at this trail mix that we made. Yogurt dip pretzels, cranberries, banana chips, and blueberry and strawberry tiny toast. You know, a common mistake that people make is thinking that box cereal's got a lot of sugar in it, not tiny toast. Nine grams of sugar, but 12 grams of whole grain, making it good for you. Check out these no-bake little treats over here. I got the strawberry, tiny toast, mixed with dried strawberries, with marshmallow, a little caramel on top to bring the whole thing together. It is absolutely incredible. And now I'm gonna show you how to make one of my favorite easy dishes. It's a fro-yo blueberry. That's right, I'm gonna take great yogurt right here, some blueberry puree, mix it together. So far, pretty easy. Slide them all together in my bowl. That's a great little color. Then, I've got my little cupcake holders right here that I'm gonna fill with the yogurt. Then, I'm gonna top it. A little bit of blueberry, boom, and then the blueberry tiny toast. Gives that little crunch. You know, the yogurt's gonna be creamy, the blueberry's gonna be tart, and the crunch from the tiny toast is gonna be explosive. And the groovy thing about these tiny toasts are what they don't have inside of it. No high fructose corn syrup, no artificial flavors, and no artificial colors. Makes it good for you. You take this whole jammy when it's all done, pop it in the freezer, like I'm gonna do right now, and through the magic of television, we're gonna pull out some already done, incredible blueberry fro-yo deliciousness. You wanna know more about these recipes and Tiny Toast Cereal? Check out tinytoastcereal.com or our website, thebalancingact.com. Remember, this has been a quick bite. Or two forward. Well, I don't know about you, but I can't wait to see the bodyguard. I know, and Deborah sings so beautiful. I mean, she sounds like Whitney Houston. Exactly like her. Amazing. Unfortunately, it is time to close the show. But remember, you can head to our Facebook page and our website. Follow us on Twitter. We are very social. We've got so much there for you. Thanks so much, everybody, for watching. We will see you again next time.